Hi YouTubers, welcome back to Donny Boy 73 the small engine doctor. Today I'm going to show you how to clean the carburetor off of an older 8 horsepower Briggs and Stratton engine on a snowblower. And here's the old snowblower. An old lawn boy. I didn't know lawn boy made snowblowers. It should be called a snowboy. And it's an 8 horsepower dual stage and it is the 8 horsepower Briggs and Stratton engine. A totally different carb setup than the older Tecumseh's. The carb on this one is right over here. And I know it's a fuel issue because I've checked for spark. It's got good spark. If I spray quick start down the plug hole, it will start, burn what's there. And even with the choke on, it will not run. And as you can see, it looks like it's been sitting for a very long time. So I'm going to start by taking off the speed control knob here. Just unscrew it. Now you'll need to take off this bolt. It's a half inch. and it's a fairly long bolt. Now I'm going to take off the flat screw over here and I'll take off the two slotted screws over here and now this cover should come off. At this point if you have a fuel shutoff valve underneath the fuel tank please shut it off. Just turn this in clockwise or use a pair of pliers to do so. Now I'm going to disconnect the fuel line from the carb right over here there might be a bit of fuel that's going to come out, but make sure you have shut off the fuel valve and make sure to have something below the carb so that the fuel can drip on it like a rag or something. Now with a large Phillips screwdriver, I'm going to remove both screws over here. Also at this point I need to remove the 7 16 bolt underneath the carb right here. And all that's holding the carb on is the linkage over here so just slide the carb on its side and it's going to come out. So now I've got the carburetor out and it's ready to be taken apart to see what's going on in there. And here's the carburetor again. There will be fuel that will be leaking out of it. So make sure you have something underneath to grab the fuel or a container. Now to take this carburetor apart, the first thing I'm going to do is remove this nut over here to get the needle right out. And then there's another needle in there or a jet that needs to be removed. From my experience, if I don't do this first, it's a bit hard to separate the carburetor in half. And make sure to put all your parts in the container so you do not lose any of them. And I can already see some dirt down in here, which is not a good sign. And now you need a slotted screwdriver to remove that jet in there. Now a good tip when you do a job like this is always use good screwdrivers when doing this because if you don't, you can end up damaging carburetor parts like the screws and the jets. If this screw doesn't come out, spray some penetrating oil in there and let it sit for quite a while. I've seen them so jammed up in there that were almost impossible to get out. This is a fairly long jet that's going to come out. So now I'm going to take the top screws off. And there's three of them. Now that the screws are off, you need to separate the top part of the carb from the bottom part. Sometimes it's stuck on from the gasket. If that's the case, just gently hit it with the back of a screwdriver. Here's the inside of the carb. There is a bit of corrosion down here. Now I'm going to take the float off. To do that, just push the pin out. Now I'm going to shake the float. If I hear that there's fuel in the float, then I know it needs to be replaced. If you don't hear any fuel inside the float, then it's good. And I usually do this by my ear, but if it's a big float like this, usually you can hear even if it's not up close. And it sounds pretty good. Nice and dry inside, so I'm going to keep the float. Next, the needle is going to come out. And at this point, I think I'm going to leave this gasket on here. 
That's because the problem usually ends up being in the jet here. At this point I have the most dirtiest carburetor parts from it. I'm going to spray some carb cleaner on these parts. If you do have a can full of carb cleaner, you can soak them right in. And I'm going to make sure that the long jet there is submerged. So I'm going to let that soak in there for a good hour or possibly overnight if that's the case. And then I'm going to come back and clean all the parts up. Okay, so I'm back. The car parts have been soaking for a while. I'm going to clean them up now and put the car back together. So I'll start with the car bowl. Now because it's not too bad, just wiping it with a good rag is going to do the trick. If it was really bad, I could use a 400 grit emery sandpaper and reach down inside and sand off the dirt. Or even the corrosion. And that looks pretty good. Now for the main jet, I'm just going to wipe it clean to start with. Now to start cleaning that, I have a piece of wire from a wire brush on a small piece of wood. And right up here there's a tiny hole, you want to make sure it's unplugged. And run it through the holes on the tube. You can see through it so you know it's clean. And just repeat the process all around this tube. And I've got a 1 16th drill bit, I'm going to run it inside the tube. Just like this, so if there's any dirt it's going to stick to the bit. Do the same over here. And it looks pretty clean because I don't see too much dirt on the drill bit. Oftentimes what I'll do is blow in it to make sure it's unplugged. And if you can hear the air coming out then that's good. You can also blow on one end, hold the other end and the air should be coming out of the holes in the center of the tube. Also if you look at it in the light, you should see that the center hole is totally unplugged like this. That's what you want. You have to be able to see right through. And now to clean the end of this, I'm just going to run it quickly on my wire brush. Now remember, you must use a soft wire brush, like a brass one, to do this. And it's not really going to affect the flow of the fuel. Some people say, oh, it's going to scratch the needle. But you know what? We're not working on the space shuttle. It's a really old carburetor. It's probably 30 years old. And they've always ran for me after I've done that. Now when you go to put your car back together, if you see that the needle seat is dirty, just roll up some emery paper, like a 400 grit or 600. Just put it in here, rub it on each side, and that'll clean it up good. And then just spray it out with carb cleaner or your air compressor. Always make sure to be safe and wear safety glasses. To start with, I'm going to insert the needle in the float, just like this. Just going to hold it like that. Now I'm going to line it all up here. Once you've got it in, line up the holes and put the pin over here. Just like that. And you have to make sure that the little pin on the needle is inside the tab, just like this. That's very important. Now I'm going to reassemble the two carburetor parts together. If this gasket is in bad shape, replace it. I'm just going to try this one like this for now because I just want to see if it runs first before I spend money on more parts. Now when you put the two carburetor halves together, you want to line them up like this. This part's going to slide right in here. And now screw in the three screws. There's one here, one there, and one over here. And now tighten up the three screws evenly on the carburetor so you do not have any air or fuel leaks. The next thing to install is this jet over here, the one with the long tube. So insert it in here. And it's got quite a ways to go down there. And do not over tighten it because you could easily strip the threads or the top of the screw. The next part to go in is this. Make sure you've got the gasket on here. And it's going to go at the bottom where the other jet went in. And use a 7 16 wrench to do this. 
and now I'm ready to reinstall it on the engine. The first thing you want to reinstall is the linkage to the throttle mechanism over here. To do that, grab the linkage, insert it in the hole over here, just push it in the hole, and there it's in. Now you want to make sure you have this gasket, put it over here, now line it up with the manifold over here, and reinstall the screws, make sure everything is lined up. and tighten up both screws evenly. Now I'm going to reinstall this box here at the end of the carb. Just simply reinstall it like this. And I'll reinstall the 7 16 bolt that goes underneath. Now I'm going to reconnect the fuel line and make sure to reopen the fuel valve underneath the fuel tank. So now I'm going to start it up. If you do start it in your garage, make sure you have good ventilation, like have both garage doors open. Now it sounds like it's running a bit rich. What I'm going to do to correct that, I'm going to screw that screw in clockwise to run it leaner. I'm going to start by giving it half a turn right now. But at least today we know that the engine runs good. You have seen in this video how to take the carb apart, put it back together. It was a question that I often received, but finally now you're going to have a video showing you how to do that. Now you can reinstall all the covers. On this one I have to run the throttle rod through this hole here. Don't forget to put the throttle knob on here. And there's two screws that go over here. The other one goes here. And the last one goes right over here. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe, and we'll see you in my next video.